You know, I've been hearing so many people, Trump haters, of course, spreading the most incredible conspiracy theory about the shooting of Donald Trump. And it's not just online. I mean, a dozen just yesterday that I know of directly, oh, it was a setup. The shooting was a, set a setup. I mean, just look how Trump straight away posed for this picture. Didn't miss a beat after supposedly being shot. Had to be a setup. Look how it's helped Trump's campaign. Made him a hero. Let me just go through this insane theory because what is actually clear from the evidence is that it's far more likely that Trump was nearly killed by something else. The insane identity politics and also the health and safety obsessions of the modern left. The sort that infantilizes us, of course, and nearly got a president killed. Some amazing footage of this coming up. But first, the conspiracy theory. Now, if you believe it, that this was a setup. You'd have to believe the Trump campaign actually thought it was losing this election to Joe Biden and it had to go for a Hail Mary pass. <laughs> and that they thought, I know, let's get Donald Trump wounded, but not seriously, in a supposed assassination plot and get the sympathy vote. Now, let's hire not some proven gunman, not some Lee Harvey Oswald type ex army with a grudge. But of all the people, let's pick a random 20-year-old loner with no known profile or allegiances and hope that he won't blab to his parents. And then let's order police away from the very building that directly overlooks Trump's stage so that our boy gets a clear line of fire. And let's hope that it's such a dead shot that he only nicks Trump's ear from at least 130 metres away. Well, in fact, turns out this... 20-year-old, had to be even better than that. He even had to be able to predict Take that Trump would move his head very slightly. The split second, our boy squeezes that trigger so that the bullet didn't actually blow off the back of Trump's head, only hit his ear. Because those were real bullets, let's not pretend. I mean, a New York Times photographer just happened to catch one on a, on a picture, flying past Trump's head. It was in a burst of pictures he took. And one person behind Trump was killed. And to top off this setup, this gunman that these Trump people had to hire, well, he would have had to expect that his own head would then be blown off, which it was. Well, nearly, figuratively. Now, to all those people spreading this theory, don't you think you sound like a total goose? Don't you think you sound like a real fool? How thick would you have to be to believe something like that? But then say, oh yeah, but you know, look how fast Trump was on his feet, defiant, like he kind of knew this was coming. Well, that's because he was a fighter. He is a fighter. And what's more, he will have thought a million times of the real risk he'd be shot. Other presidents have been shot. And imagine how, he's probably imagined how he'd react. He is, after all, I said, years of TV stardom. He knows where the cameras are. And then as a politician, and there were dozens of photographers around, he would have had at least one around, surely, to be able to take that famous picture of him refusing the cow, shaking his fist. And indeed, one was there, only one. It, let's not bother with it anymore. If you hear anyone saying that, show him this video, or whatever, just tell him you're a fool. But to the real issue here, which is both more believable and yet more amazing. Why wasn't that building that this gunman climbed up cleared by police? Why wasn't a policeman up there instead stopping people from getting on that roof? And that's just the first amazing thing. Another is that the head of the Secret Service, meant to be defending Trump, said, well, Police were actually inside that very building that the gunman used. The gunman was up there for half an hour. Police, meantime, were inside that very same building. Would you believe that? But they were in it, not on it. And that apparently is because, well, the roof was too dangerous. Should that roof have been secure, period? That building in particular has a, a sloped roof uh, at its highest point. Um, and so, you know, there's a safety factor that would be con considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof. Uh, and so, you know, the decision was made to secure the building uh, from inside. 
is that head of America's Secret Service serious? I mean, really? The roof used by the gunman, that's on the left, was too steep for police to get up on. They're there now with the body, of course. But meanwhile, the roof on the right could be used by a sniper defending Trump, although it was, what, two or three times steeper. That doesn't make sense. But the result of that idiocy is that this amateur gunman had a clear shot at Donald Trump, and if he was any good at shooting, should have killed him. Should have been easy. But the stupidity doesn't end there. That Secret Service director had another modern cause to push. Diversity and equity. She has actually ordered in the past the Secret Service to employ at least 30% more women. I'm very conscious uh, as, uh, as I sit in this chair now of making sure that we need to uh, attract diverse candidates and ensure that we are developing and giving opportunities to everybody in our workforce, um, and particularly women. And now you've seen the results, of course. There are women agents too short to protect Trump from bullets. No idea what they're doing. Fluttering here and there while the male agents went about bundling Trump into his car. One was not even able to holster her gun. She was so nervous and flustered. And another was fiddling with her sunglasses. Let's see it all again because it's almost Keystone Cops. In fact, that was so embarrassing that I think that might explain something we saw three days later. What was it? Yesterday, when Trump arrived at the Republican National Conference with another four, a lot of guards, Secret Service agents, and see something about them? All male, all big, all intimidating. <laughs> I think lesson learned. So there's no need to look to kooky conspiracy theories to explain this shooting. I think you should look instead to the most monumental incompetence. And thanks in part to modern new identity politics and a little bit of health fascism. Not to mention, of course, a lot of anti-Trump hatred pushed so recklessly by the left.